Okay, dear students, and let us see what is there in this question. An isolated hollow metal sphere of radius r carries a positive charge, which graph shows the variation of potential v with the distance x from the center of the sphere. Okay, my dear students, I must say that this question is not that very easy. We have to delve a little deeper into what is the science of spheres like the metallic spheres, hollow spheres, or which are non-conducting spheres. So I'm going to tell you a bit of background there, and then we would be in the right position to answer. Um, okay, let's go for this now. First of all, uh, there are two parts. Uh, let me first talk about uh, the conducting sphere. Or you can call it hollow sphere. Okay, so what, what happens here is, like whenever there is this kind of a sphere here, and we give a charge to this sphere, because this is a conducting charge, the charge wants to be at as far possible distance as possible, because the charges are repelling each other. So all of the charges, they are only going to reside only at the surface of the, of the body. Only at the surface of the body. So that is why that this is like a special category of sphere, which you can call it like it is a solid sphere, but conducting material, or you can call it, it is a non-conducting material, but it is hollow so that the charge is surviving only at the surface of the sphere. There is no charge inside of it. If this is the, um, uh, the condition there, and if this is valid, then these are the formulas that we are going to use. Like this is the point P, there are three cases now. Uh, number one, like I will say outside or let me write it here for a point outside, the electric field intensity or the electric field strength is given by KQ divided by R square, which is typically the Coulomb's law. And it is like uh, the electric field strength as if the complete total charge Q, which is the source charge here, it is concentrated only at the center of the sphere. It is typically same as that uh, of the uh, simple Coulomb's law or the point charges. There's no difference there as long as the point P is outside of the sphere. Now, um, what about the potential here? So the potential here comes out to be negative, sorry, positive KQ divided by R. Now you see, I am that much sure here that the potential will be positive. Why? Because straightforward in electrostatics, there is the rule positive charge is going to cast positive potential. So this charge is positive. It is going to create positive potential at the point P. If this charge was negative, negative potential will be created at point P. So that is another conclusion, very conclusive argument that you must important. So uh, that you must know. So V is equal to plus KQ by R. Okay, now let us come to the surface. I'm not giving you the derivations for this. I'm only giving you the formulas. On the surface, you see the electric field on the surface becomes KQ divided by capital R square when small r is equal to capital R. Fine, and now the potential. So the potential will be again positive VKQ divided by capital R. Nothing much to note here. It's pretty simple and straightforward. But what happens when you move inside of it? Now there is a big difference and there is a big change. So inside of it, inside of it at any point, you see all of these charges, they are attracting, they are pulling this point towards them. And the other charges here, they are pulling uh, this thing to the other side. So there are these two forces, which are basically equal and opposite. It can be proved. And so we come to this conclusion that the electric field inside of a hollow sphere will be zero. So the E inside is zero here. And what about the potential inside? So potential inside is constant and it is equal to the potential at the surface and which is given by positive KQ divided by R. Fine. Don't ask questions like, why is that? How is that? We are not getting into details here. I'm just going to give you the values. Okay. Okay, now, 
So these are the values. And now you see, there is one thing I can I can tell you here. Like you must be knowing that E is given by minus dV by dr. And now you see, if uh, uh, the electric field inside is coming out to be zero, it only means that the potential is constant. So by the help of calculus, it can very easily be proved that the potential will be the same. So now coming to the graphs. So how the graph would be looking here, both for the electric field as well as for the potential. So this is the point I'm drawing the graph from here. Okay. So this is the axis which is talking about the electric field. And this is the second graph that I'm going to draw. Like here, this is about the potential. Be very careful now. So the potential is positive as well as the electric field is positive. And this is the electric field at the surface. This is the radius r. Now you see the electric field inside is zero. As we know here, it is given as zero. Fine. So we take it as zero. So this electric field is going to be zero here. And afterwards, it will be a discontinuous curve and immediately it will become ES. And afterwards, ES is having only this kind of a variation. So E is directly proportional to one by R square. And this is ES at this point, it is ES and inside it is zero. This is the graph for the electric field strength. Now let us move to the potential. What is happening now? So you see the potential is given here. This is again the hyperbolic variation, one by R. And then again, it would be having a maximum value and then it is going to be constant. So basically this is the point and it is constant inside. And here the variation is V is directly equal to one by R. So this is how the graph will look like for the hollow uh, Sophia. Is it fine? Okay. So you can pause the video. You can learn this thing. You can see this thing. And accordingly, if I move to our question now, so I can very well answer it here. Like what will be the graph? So it wants you to talk about the potential. And as I've told you, the potential should be like this. It should be constant earlier because this is the VS. And afterwards, the potential is inversely proportional to 1 by R. So our answer is clearly B. And the mark scheme is also telling you that it is B. But in this video, I have yet not discussed the non-conducting spheres. So I would be telling you about the non-conducting spheres also. So if you can please bear with me for a couple of minutes more, I tell you about, the, about that. Just a moment. Yes. Okay. So let us talk about the non-conducting spheres. I'm just going to edit everything here. It would be taking not more than two minutes. Please listen to this. Non-conducting spheres. So if non-conducting sphere is given, because a couple of graphs belong to non-conducting also in the options that they have given. That is what I'm telling you. What happens is all of the charge is now, these are the non-conductings. So that is why all of the charge is now uniformly distributed inside the sphere. Like this. So this is number one, the qualitative difference between the two topics when you have a conducting sphere and when you have a non-conducting sphere. So this is how they look. And <clears throat> outside the formulas are typically same. There is no difference for the outside point. On the surface point, again, they are typically the same. There is no difference there also, but inside there is a big difference. Now, uh, the electric field inside is also not zero. And this is also not like this. I would be telling you this. Okay. So in this thing, what is happening is uh, the electric field inside is given by the formula K Q. It gets multiplied by the small r divided by capital R Q. You have to derive these formulas, but we are not talking about the derivations presently. I'm just giving you the formulas, okay? So this is like this. 
So these graphs are definitely going to change here, okay? It's no longer zero. So the graph is going to change. I'll tell you what it, it is going to be. And the potential is even weird. The potential is given by K, Q into three capital R square minus R square divided by two R Q. It's a really weird formula, but yes, it is like that. And so now when we are analyzing the graph, so outside graph is also typically same. Everything is fine, but inside it is changing. So what is happening inside? You see the electric field inside is directly proportional to R. So this becomes a straight line because now E is directly proportional to R. Okay. And what is happening in this case, in the case of Vs? In the case of Vs, like at the center of the sphere, we have to find like if the small r is taken as zero, that is at the center of the sphere. So this r will be zero and it will come out to be, uh, I know, and I would be a bit quicker now, it will be three by two velocity at the surface. So velocity at the, uh, uh, sorry, not velocity, potential. So potential at the surface, so we need to take the half here. It will be like this, my dear students. And this potential will be three by two of Vs. And this is Vs. It's a really difficult question, I would say. And uh, it's a big thing. So they must not have given you all of these graphs. I, it's really um, uh, surprising or shocking. You can say that they have given you so many of the graphs, but they, they should not be doing this because actually there is one law, which is known as Gauss law, which is actually responsible. Like this is from this law, we, you are able to derive all these formulas and we are not using Gauss law ever. So it's really beyond our uh, books, beyond our slavers. But anyways, so this is what is happening. And this variation is parabola. So electric field is directly proportional to negative parabola. So this variation is like this. So this is what is happening in this question, my dear students. So you can please take the image there. You can take the screenshot. You can try to pause the video, listen to this like a couple of times and understand what is happening here. Be very careful about at least graphs. Like what is happening? <clears throat> what is happening in the case of graphs? You have to be very careful. So now coming back to the question, you see, indeed our answer is B, but you see, this is also one of the graphs, possible graphs that we have seen. This is again, one of the possible graphs that we have seen. This is definitely out of the question. Never this kind of a scenario is going to happen. But uh, these two graphs are really possible graphs. So that is why it was really confusing. And I wanted to tell you all the four graphs. And there you are, I have told you all those things. Formulas, you may or may not remember, but graphs, please do remember that. So my dear students, this is Professor Varun. Sorry for a bit long video and going into too much detail in this video, but I think it is it might be of some use to you. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel. All the best.